Yo, how are you doing everybody? So today I'm going to be doing a Bravely Default 2 guide versus the boss fight for Ball. So this is one of the bosses you can stumble across in Chapter 2. But um, yeah, he is very, very powerful. I would not suggest fighting him as soon as you are able to. I would definitely come back maybe after you've finished Chapter 3 or Chapter 4. Probably Chapter 4 would be a little bit better off. Because yeah, this guy has 156,000 HP. He's got uh, plenty of it. So yeah, this is not a fight you want to jump into. For me, the team I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using a healer that's a Spirit Master White Mage. I have my uh, tank that is a shield master, and I have two Arcanists. Unfortunately, one of them just died right there, but I actually have a spirit master that has the life bringer ability, so I bring him right on back without even having to uh, use a turn for that. If you want to unlock the level 15 spirit master, or well, level 15 for the class, I have a, another guide that shows how to do that, so feel free to check that out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But yeah, this uh, this fight is definitely a tricky one. I would highly suggest using magic casters for this boss fight rather than uh, physical. Because the thing with this boss is that it has a counter that can really mess you up. I'll definitely talk about that when the time comes. But yeah, what I'm going to be doing here, I'm just playing defensive. I use Rampart, which is a Bastion ability that's going to protect everyone on my team from at least one physical attack. I will also use re-raise on some of my party members. The re-raise makes it so that they'll be able to come back to life even when they hit zero HP. So this is very, very useful. If you have um, the sub job specialty two, you can actually cast re-raise on everyone, which is uh, really, really nice. So that way it only takes one turn instead of four. Uh, poison here, unfortunately poison, the boss is just gonna be completely immune to it. Uh, the type of damage I'm looking to do here is actually going to be ice damage as the boss is vulnerable to water element spells, which Blizzard and all of its family of spells definitely are. And yeah, right here, I finally got the re-raises on everyone. I've also just been defaulting. When you default, you know, you take reduced damage and you raise your BP right there. I'm taking some physical attacks from the boss, but it's fine. The Rampart was able to absorb uh, some of the damage there, and then I had plenty of HP for the rest of it. Yeah, here we go. I'm just going to use all that BP, just pour it into Blazagas here. And as you can see, yes, vulnerable to water. And we're doing like about 5,000 damage here. Um, the Arcanist has the highest magical, magical attack stat out of the uh, different casters. So if you're ever just looking for like raw magic attack, the Arcanist is pretty good at that. Um, and to further increase that damage, you can dual wield. Uh, the dual wield specialty, you would get that from the Phantom class, the Assassin. So uh, definitely throw that on there and you can have like two stabs. I actually have a Lance on um, Elvis there because it actually increases the magical attack more than some of my other staff. So I'm happy to dual wield that. So it doesn't really matter. Just uh, do take note, if you try to dual wield without uh, utilizing, and yeah, he's of course immune to death as many bosses are. But yeah, if you try to dual wield without using the specialty to dual wield, you get a reduction to the stat increase that you uh, would normally get if you had the specialty. So you don't wanna just dual wield all willy nilly. If you do not have the sub job specialty, it's better to just have the one staff and then maybe have a shield in the other hand. As long as you're not, uh, increasing your uh, weight for your equipment too high because if you're overburdened that will also reduce your stats and yeah right here i actually did 13,000 damage on that critical attack so that was really nice um to crit with magic attacks that also requires another uh ability like a specialty you have to get it's the um ability from red mage with uh red mage it's literally just uh magic critical attacks you throw that on there and then yeah your magic attacks are able to crit the fact that I crit for over 9,999 damage, because 9,999 is the damage cap for this game. You're not able to do more damage than that normally. But um, another passive ability is uh, for the Hellblade. If you have a fully leveled Hellblade, or I guess it's level 12, 
uh because you can unlock up to level 15 but yeah you get that uh that max level uh before the legendary unlock and that will allow you to get i think it's called uh surpassing limits and yeah just as it says you are able to do over uh 9999 damage it's not guaranteed um, you still have to just up your damage through normal means. Uh, just having the ability on there doesn't up your damage itself. So do keep that in mind. If your damage is on the low side, then yeah, the ability is kind of useless. So it just depends on how much damage you are able to output. And yeah, right here, I'm um, using the Bulwark ability as it increases Gloria's physical defense. And you can see she has been using the Protect Ally ability, which is a passive ability. If any of her teammates are at low HP, she will just protect them automatically. This is super duper useful. So that way you don't really have to worry about having HP on your squishier teammates. You can just allow them to do whatever it is they want to do. And uh, when they're in that uh, low health threshold, the shield master will just take care of them. And yeah, right here, not really doing anything extra just continually applying these blizzagas my mp is getting a little low here so um thankfully i do have uh, a lot of ethers so i'll be able to get my mp back just fine also with the spirit master is an ability you can use i can also uh increase the amount of mp so uh do utilize that if uh you think that'll be useful these acid breaths are a little tricky because, yeah, my Shield Master is pretty much the only one taking the attacks. And, yeah, you can see my Shield Master actually doesn't have her weapon anymore. She was holding a weapon in her right hand, but now she only has her shield. What it is, is once this uh, monster gets low, or I guess maybe it might just be chance on hit, but I do believe it's when the boss gets low, there's a chance that he will just steal your weapon. And that weapon will be gone for the remainder of the fight. You'll get it back at the end, but, yeah, if you deal damage... Uh, primarily through melee attacks and you're using a weapon that is going to be a huge huge detriment to uh, your damage potential so definitely make sure that you're using magical casters to fight ball otherwise you will find yourself uh, like probably doing good at first but then once you lose access to your ability to do damage it's gonna be so much harder but yeah I was trying to mention about this acid breath it is reducing my uh, physical defense and magical defense. So every time the boss hits me with that, I'm going to be more and more vulnerable. Which is the main reason why I did want that uh, re-raise on Gloria. It was making it easier, so even if she got defeated, she would immediately come right back up. So yeah, do try to keep an eye on that. Uh, the bulwarks, while I was hitting the boss physically in order to uh, get access to them, it was increasing my physical defense, so I wouldn't take too much damage, you know, so that way I can kind of uh, bob and weave in between, like, how high and low my defense is as long as I'm utilizing my turns. Well, as you can see here, like, again, you know, I'm not doing any damage to the boss through the Shield Master, but I'm uh, preventing the boss from just, like, destroying me for free. Because, yeah, these Acid Breaths are just really, really damaging, because it's, like, I'm taking damage from multiple party members because of the Protect Ally ability. So I'm not just getting hit by like one uh, uh, one ailment, right? Where it's like, oh, physical defense and magical defense goes down by one. No, it goes down for each party member that I'm uh, protecting. So I'll lose like, uh, I think like 30% right there. So it can be really, really tough. But yeah, I think this right here should be the end of the boss. We've done plenty of damage. Oh, okay, yeah, he has just a little bit of HP left. But yeah, that's fine. 9k, I can do that in probably two attacks. There's 5,700, and there is another 5,200. The boss is defeated. So uh, yeah, that is going to be my guide for today. If you found this uh, useful, please let me know. Um, if you used a different strategy yourself, I'm also very interested in that. Just, you know, leave a comment down below. But uh, yeah, that's going to be me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you all in the next one.